everyone, it's Jalapino, and this is the next installment of the EVCraft Business Let's Play tutorial series. Uh, today, um, we are going to uh, do some additional automation uh, for some groundwork so that I can actually get way more into bees than what I am right now. Um, if you'll recall in previous episodes, I do a lot of complaining about the fact that I do not have uh, BuildCraft gates uh, set up yet. I, uh, I could craft them on my own, but uh, I really wanted to uh, try creating an automated setup. This will be a first for me, so uh, we'll see if we can get this done. The first thing we are going to need to do is, uh, if you've never worked with uh, the BuildCraft uh, uh, assembly tables before, uh, basically the way it works is you have um, one block that you put all your materials in, and you specify what recipes of what you want it to create, and then you create um, these laser blocks around it that basically use MJ energy, transfer that energy into the assembly table to a point where it gathers enough and creates the item. It's easier to see than to say, so uh, we're going to get at crafting this stuff. First we need the assembly table, which requires a fair amount of obsidian and, uh, well, four diamonds. And then we also need, I don't remember the exact name, but I think it's like a, well, it's just laser, okay? That makes it easy. Uh, you only technically need one laser, but the more you have, the faster things will get constructed. But we are only going to create one for now, um, just to, uh, to demonstrate how things operate. And I desperately need to expand my, uh, uh, my assembler here, which is something I'll probably do off camera. Um, so now that we've got it set to uh, to do that uh, assembly, we want to create one table and we want to create one laser. Yeah, there now. I still haven't really finalized the structure of my base. I'm slowly beginning to map it out, but I'm really not quite there yet. But for now, I want to keep uh, my assembly relatively close to uh, both my power outlets and my uh, AE system. So I'm actually going to snake it in here for now, um, just because I know I've got some cables running underneath here. The assembly table does not require to be powered. The laser does. I believe the laser, um, I'm pulling this number out of my butt here, but I believe it has to be within five blocks of the assembly table. I might be a bit off on that. Uh, I need some more energy conduits. So now what will happen is as um, when I set something to be crafted, the laser is going to come from this block into this block and start crafting whatever I need to have made. Uh, the end goal of what I want to make is uh, right here, the auto, uh, ator, <laughs> auto, I don't know, the, the odd gates, we'll just call it that. I am having uh, uh, hooked on phonics lacking moment here so uh, but this is what we need which requires a gate a pulsating chip and a redstone iron chip so let's just start off with uh, making the gates gates require redstone chips so uh, if we look up what a redstone chip requires obviously it's going to need redstone stone chip set just requires redstone so that's simple enough toss some redstone into here and now you see the chipset is available as a recipe now nothing is happening yet that's because we haven't said hey it's okay to make redstone chipsets you right click on it and it 
it should actually start transferring energy to the assembly table in theory. This might be another one of those things, putting the cable down before putting the machine down, causing me grief. Yep, there we go. So now you see the laser shooting through here, and uh, this red bar has to get all the way to the top, and once it's managed to do that, it will create the chipset. Now the one item missing from this is the assembly table will actually uh, dump the chip when it's done into a chest. Uh, so until we get the automation up, we are going to simply pop a chest right here. And we'll, uh, we'll just wait for this to finish. All right, so the chipset has just finished. The red bar reaches top, and now we have a chipset in here. And now, if we take that same chipset and put it in the inventory section, now we have the opportunity to create a gate. So I right-click on it again, and you'll notice that it's got the red corners again, but they're dark. That means, the well, the lighted one up means this is what the table is currently working on it rotates through whatever you have activated. So after it's finished creating this chipset, it will build a gate. And once it's done building a gate, it'll go back to doing the chipsets for as long as I have inventory in the system. So that's effectively how assembly tables work. Now, obviously to speed this up, we would want to create another uh, few lasers. Some people use four or five. And, uh, you know, we just basically put it around the table and each one will speed up the crafting, but obviously each one also consumes more MJ per tick. So if you uh, need to conserve your energy, one, uh, one MJ, or one laser I should say, will eventually do the job and you just have to wait. All right, so now as far as automating this goes, I we can still use interfaces for this and they will work uh, twofold for us. However, I also think that uh, we're going to run into a problem with uh, having the multiple recipes. Since we don't want it crafting things that we don't need, we are probably going to have to set up one, uh, one assembly table per interface. It's probably just waiting for iron to do its thing. I'm just being impatient. Alright, so we have one interface done, which is all we really need for this first uh, test. Standing, I can actually put the interface anywhere. Um, I'm eventually going to put it underneath just to save space. But for this test, we will uh, we are going to put the interface right next to the assembly table. crafting and 
start its crafting, and then when it's done, pop the chipset back into the interface, which will go into our network, so it will actually double as, uh, as receiving the item. But normally I don't do that in other places, uh, simply because of the fact uh, I'm not 100% confident it will always extract items back out through the top. Um, so I, I think you, has to, you have to have something that actually pushes the item out of it, because these will not actually drag items out unless it's properly configured. Uh, that would require more testing, but uh, my system seems to work fairly well. Say I want to craft a chipset. Now, as I said, I've never done this before, so I need to play with this a bit. Alright, so it's dropped the redstone in, and it's now started creating the chipsets. So that's working fantastically for us. And I'm just going to wait for this to do its thing, and then I'll be back. Alright, so we're nearly done here, and it's created the chipset, and now in theory, we should now have a chipset in our system here somewhere. There it is. So, it's working perfectly. Now, the complicated part is going to be the next stages. Uh, we know we need to create a gate, so we actually need a second assembly table. sitting here just waiting for this stuff to uh, craft. Auto crafting does take a little bit of time. You can do a lot of things to speed things up like having uh, additional machines set up, uh, setting recipes to actually do more at once. It is possible to increase things like if I um, if I was upset with the speed of the smelting I could probably create myself an IC2 induction furnace uh, to speed things up as well. But at the end of the day, usually I set stuff up to start crafting, and uh, you know, when I go do something that doesn't require me just sitting here watching it, so it normally does not cause me any concern. While we're here, we're actually going to create a second laser. Like you don't know how it happened, and it may 
randomly happen every time something needs to be acquired. But really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how it works out, just as long as it makes sure it processes everything I ever need. And uh, I am not going to keep the setup like this. Uh, I'm going to adjust it once I'm done this tutorial. I just want to show you guys how this stuff operates. Since it seems to be working. Oh, I guess I should have my interfaces. And I guess while I wait, I will get another assembly tank for it. Actually, I think I'll need two. So I'll let it do what needs to be done. Yeah, this is going to get awfully crowded, but uh, it does work. So the gate has been done, and should be in here now. And yet it isn't, so let's see what happened to it. Uh, I put it right next to this assembly. Okay, so that's what happened. It actually took the uh, gate and threw it into this assembly table, so I'm going to have to mess with that so inventory doesn't get screwed up. items you can't shift click it into an interface, well, with the items you can't, with the patterns you can, but when I shift click the gate in there, it just took the gate away. Alright, so, now this stuff should actually be set up to work fine, so now I'm going to remove the chipset center in the system, and I'm going to say, okay, I want you to create me a gate. So now, it should start creating Set. Come on, lasers. There we go. And then once the chipset passes over to the uh, the system, it should dump that chipset then into this assembly table, which will create the gate. Now it looked like I had to, since I had to reset the table, I had to actually start this recipe at least once. Uh, in theory, I should not have to do that again. So if I want to create another redstone chipset, I should be fine. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind when you first do this. Every assembly table will have to have its recipes activated at least once. redstone engines. Like, you'll remember, like, over here, for example, I have uh, a redstone engine that is pumping fluid out of the center tank into the uh, steel tank here. It works. It's perfectly fine. I find it ugly, and uh, it also doesn't allow me to do any kind of special configuring. Like, say, f with this, it's not going to be anything. When you see what I do with the bees, you'll find out why it's very necessary. But this, for example, uh, I can specify, you know, when I want the signal to operate. Uh, some of these items obviously don't always apply to uh, everything, but in this case, I want to apply a signal 
if it has fluid in the tank, which effectively means if it has any, uh, any cryostatio oil here, I want this redstone signal to be on, and now I have to tell it what I want it to do. Uh, redstone signal, I don't think we'll actually bring the items out. I think we have to use... Well, let's see if that'll work, because I think I have to use a pulse, and if I can't use a pulse, I will have to wait until I have the, uh, the other gates. Another potential issue, I don't think I need a stone floor pipe. I'm still getting used to 1.6 and, uh, in 1.5 I use thermal expansion and with thermal expansion, uh, there are, uh, special fluid conduits you can use that don't require this level of complexity. Just test, just to make sure it doesn't require the pipe. But I feel that's the most that's necessary. Alright, so that is not going to work on its own. So I'm heading back over here, and we are actually going to make uh, the Autotoric Gate, maybe, is what it's called. Autarchic Gate. We'll go with that. Alright, with that, we need uh, a few different things. A pulsating chipset, which requires an ender pearl, and we need uh, a redstone iron chipset. Now, because obviously there's even more things here, at the end of the day, you're going to need, I think, five assembly tables to make this all work. You might be able to get away with um, bunching some together, like for example, if um, for this table, because it uses redstone, if I pick something that doesn't use redstone and add it to this recipe, like just the actual gate itself, like the one that is used here, it should effectively work, because then this will just basically work on uh, the redstone chipset if there's redstone in there, or creating the gate if there's a redstone chipset in there. I wouldn't want to use something that requires, say, redstone and iron in the thing that uses redstone, otherwise it's going to be creating additional chipsets we don't need. I hear a zombie, but for now, well, uh, he's leaving me alone. So, for now, we will add a redstone, an understone, and then we right click on this to create the, uh, the pulsating chipset. Now, you will notice this requires 40,000 MJ to be transferred to it, so it is going to take a while to make that happen. Uh, in this one, I need my iron still. Now, I am going to screw up kind of the automation component that I had already done uh, by uh, doing this, but you'll see already it would want to start doing the redstone chipset. For now, we're just going to save the redstone iron one. Um, so now I've actually disabled the redstone chipset from working, uh, but I'm going to find myself some better space to do this, pop up more lasers, and uh, then in the next episode, I'm going to show you this thing in full, uh, in full motion. go and I will be back. Alright, so we're almost nearly done here and I've uh, I've added a few more lasers as you can see. And uh, everything should actually be done at this point. Thank 
goodness. All right. So now we will get the other chipsets. Stone chipset, we are going to take a pulsating chipset, and we are going to take our gate, which should now allow us to create this final gate. This should actually not take long to build, it only requires 10,000 MJ, and we've got four lasers working on it. It is done. All right, so now with this gate, we can specify oh, if there's fluid in the tank, I want an energy pulsar. And now you can see the fluid's actually flowing into the tank. So now it's effectively draining this and add. Uh, these types of gates will be very, very useful with uh, with the bees and starting the breedings and the mutations, and that is going to be in our next episode. So this is Jalapeno signing off. Uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel, and uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can post it on the, uh, the comment section underneath this video, or you can go ahead and uh, come onto the server and ask whatever you need. Alright, that's it for now. Take it easy.